In this tutorial, you'll learn how to blur the background of your videos using the new Defocus Background feature in DaVinci Resolve. Many people don't use this function correctly. Stick around until the end of the video and you'll discover what they're doing wrong. Once we're on the timeline with our video, the first step is to go to the color module in DaVinci Resolve. Next, we'll open the Effects menu located in the upper right corner. We'll look for the Defocus Background effect. We select the effect and drag it onto an empty node to apply it, just like that. We see that the background is not yet blurred. Don't worry, this is totally normal. First, we need to select the person, then the blur will be applied to the background. To select the person, we go to the Magic Mask menu. Click on this icon here. With the Plus Selector icon activated, the next step is to select the part of the video we want to keep in focus. In this case, we will select the person. We place the cursor over the viewer, click left, and while holding down, we select the entire person with this blue line. It's time to paint. The more precise our selection, the better as this will allow DaVinci Resolve to clearly identify the area where we want to create the mask. Perfect. Once we've finished painting with this blue line, I recommend activating the Toggle Mask Overlay Mode. This allows us to verify if we've correctly selected the person, as it will highlight the entire selection in red. I also recommend switching the Quality Mode to Better. This will significantly improve the mask, making the selection much more precise. Great! Now that we have the mask highlighted in red, the next step is to carefully review the selection to ensure there are no errors. In this area here, we can see that it's selected a small part of the background, and also this small gap between the arm and the person. We need to remove these two parts of the selection. To do this, we will activate the minus selector icon and proceed to remove these incorrect parts. Click left and select the parts we want to remove with this red line. All set. We have completed the selection of the person and now have a perfect mask. However, we've only created the mask on a single frame of the video. That means if we change the frame, we can see that the mask disappears. It's necessary to perform motion tracking so that the mask remains throughout the entire video. Performing the motion tracking is very easy. Just click on this icon with two arrows and Magic Mask will automatically track the mask. Once finished, we don't need to do anything else in the Magic Mask menu, so we can deactivate the Toggle Mask Overlay option so that the person doesn't appear highlighted in red. You might not have noticed, but the moment we made the mask of the person, the background blur effect was applied. If I toggle the Defocus Background effect on and off, you can clearly see how it blurs the background. Within the Effects tab, we can increase or decrease the amount of blur. I don't recommend maxing it out as it becomes overly exaggerated, but a value between 0.4 and 0.8 usually looks good. You also have the option to decrease the saturation of the blurred area. In the Colorize option, you can give a color tone to the blurred background. You can choose the color to your liking. Well, these three options are very straightforward. Now comes the really interesting part. Have you heard of anamorphic lenses? Anamorphic lenses give us that cinematic look that so many desire, with horizontal light flares and that characteristic blur. The only problem is that. With the defocus background effect, we can also achieve a blur that mimics the appearance of anamorphic lenses. Doing this is very simple. We need to head to Advanced Options. Here, we can change the type of blur. Choose between Lens Blur or Gaussian Blur. I recommend leaving it as is on Lens Blur. To emulate this anamorphic blur style, we have an option called anamorphism. If we increase the anamorphism value, it will apply horizontal distortion to the blur. Anamorphic lenses typically have vertical distortion. See how the light ovals elongate vertically? To mimic this sort of blur, here's what I do. 
We decrease the anamorphism value to the minimum, to 0.2. And now we increase the blur level even more. And there we have our free anamorphic lens. Well, for $300, which is the cost of DaVinci Resolve Studio. Remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that many people use the defocus background effect incorrectly? Now I'll show you exactly what I meant. To give you a better look, let's use this other video example. In this video, I've already applied the defocus background effect, and at first glance, it might seem fine. The woman appears in focus, and the background is blurred. But the background blur is poorly done. We had the woman in the center, and she appeared focused, fine. But right next to her, at the same distance, there's this wall with shelves and books. These shelves are right next to her, they're not in the background, so they should also appear in focus. The same goes for this column on the left and the table, which are at the same distance as the woman. They should also appear in focus. However, by applying the defocus background effect, all we achieve is having the person in focus and everything else out of focus. That's not how depth of field works. That's why I've decided to include this other example in the tutorial to learn how to use the effect correctly in these types of situations. We've already selected the person using the magic mask function. Now we need to select the column and the table on the left and also the wall on the right. Can we select three elements simultaneously simultaneously with Magic Mask? Let's find out. To add the column and the table, we will click on the viewer with the plus symbol selector, exactly as we did in the previous example. We carefully select the entire area with this blue line. Perfect. It seems that it has selected correctly for now, so let's activate the Toggle Mask Overlay function to highlight our entire selection in red. Great. Now we just need to select the wall on the right. Done. We have it. It looks like it has selected some parts of the background as if they were part of the wall. To remove these incorrect areas, we click on the selector with the minus symbol and then select the area we want to delete. All right, it's the moment of truth. Let's see if Magic Mask can track three different areas at the same time. We click on the icon with two arrows to start the tracking. It seems that Magic Mask is tracking the three areas very decently. The only flaw I see is this area of the background here, but fixing it is very easy. To eliminate this part of the background that was incorrectly selected after the motion tracking, first, we need to find the frame in the video where Magic Mask begins to select that erroneous area. Okay, it looks like in this frame here, it begins to select the part of the background. We delete this area with the selector with the minus symbol, and then we do the motion tracking again, this time only to the right, until the end of the video. We click on the icon of the arrow pointing to the right. Well, it seems that now the selection is much more precise, but it still keeps selecting part of that area of the background. If you want the results to be perfect, we could try to adjust it one last time. We find the frame where the error begins, we select the affected area, and we do the motion tracking again. And done. Now, yes, we have a flawless section of the three areas. We turn off the option to highlight in red, and as we can see, we now have the background blur effect correctly applied. Nothing like the blurry mess we had before. This can really be called defocus background. If you're interested in learning more about new features in DaVinci Resolve, let me introduce you to another new function. Is it really worth it? Let's find out. <laughs>